Before the break, I asked you if you knew the answer to this question. When was last presidential election the Republican Party won without a Nixon or a Bush on the ticket? There's the answer. The Republican ticket of Hoover and Curtis back in 1928. I was checking my uh, Twitter feed and I did see one answer of Hoover. So congratulations. Nicely done. Well, the Republican Party is certainly at a crossroads. They lost the presidential race and lost seats in both the House and the Senate, but they've got a plan. Change. Change who they target. Change what they talk about. Change the attitude. It's a grand plan, but will it work? Joining me now, as they do every week, are CNN contributor Maria Cardona and Amy Holmes, anchor for Real News on The Blaze. Let's hear the assessment uh, from John McCain. There is no doubt whatsoever that the demographics are not on our side and we're going to have to give a much more positive agenda. It can't be just being against the Democrats. All right, seems simple enough, doesn't it? Uh, but how do they do it? Amy, I'm going to start with you on this one. Well, how they do it is what we've actually been seeing happening on the House side since Republicans took over there, passing budgets, laying out their vision for the future, entitlement reform, Social Security, Medicare. I think comprehensive immigration reform is something that needs to be addressed. I'm glad that you used Senator McCain because when I worked for Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist, he worked very closely with Senator McCain and then President George Bush to try to get comprehensive immigration reform done. I think that these are issues that Republicans will have to tackle in a proactive and positive way, as John McCain said, in order to reach out to voters for whom these are very important issues and concerns. All right, well, let's talk about women. I mean, House Speaker John Boehner announced the uh, committee chairman of um, 19 committees earlier this week. Uh, all but one uh, are, are white men, actually. Um, although just yesterday, as I said, he did appoint this, this woman representative, Candace Millier of Michigan, as chair mm -hmm. of the administration committee. Um, in the incoming House, there will be only 20 Republican women. That's compared with 58 Democrats. It's the same story in the Senate. Four Republican yeah. women, 16 Democrats. So, Maria, how do you fix that? Well, and this goes to the problem that the GOP has, which is an issue of credibility. And look, John McCain is right that the GOP absolutely has to change the way that they reach out to the changing demographics of this country, Latinos, African Americans, women. But it's going to take a lot more than just talking about a new agenda, and it will have to be a new agenda. They actually have to reflect what this country looks like. And so when you have John Boehner basically leading the House of Representatives with virtually all white men in leadership positions, and as I understand it, the position that, that Candace Miller now has is pretty much a consolation prize, and it happened after <laughs> all of the news that all white men were now going to be in leadership positions, that goes to an issue of credibility. And women look, look at the House and, and Latinos and African Americans, and they say, nobody there looks like me they don't understand me they're not going to know how to govern to what my interests are that's mm -hmm. a big problem but randy but randy republicans never get credit from the media when they do have a diverse roster of, of politicians that are winning elective office for example susanna martinez the first latina governor uh in america of new mexico marco rubio ted cruz michael Steele. he was the african-american rnc chairman we also have uh brian uh sorry uh in in louisiana the governor there, uh, Mr. Jindal. Republicans never get credit. Nikki Haley, she is a Republican female governor, and yet you don't see her on the front pages. Mm. And instead, what you're talking about is this uh, sort of non-story about whether or not House Republicans have women in leadership positions. But you never mention all of the minorities of women who are leading this party forward. At the Republican convention just this, the, just this last summer, you saw such a diverse roster taking that stage. But what are we talking about today? White males. Well, well, that happens to be the topic today. I can't say yeah. we never address that. We've talked a lot about Nikki Haley and others on this program. Uh, right. But we've also and talked a lot about abortion in the past and how some controversial yeah. comments about it uh, cost a couple of Republican Senate hopefuls. Um, so, Amy, two questions for you here on this one. Is there room in the party for a pro-choice candidate? And could they actually win? Uh, 
Indeed, I think that there is room for a pro-choice candidate when uh, Mayor Giuliani, he's pro-choice, he's a Republican, he won here in New York City as a, as a Republican, and he was a front-runner back in 2008, if you remember, and before we went into the primaries and we saw that he had such a disastrous campaign that was more tactical than it was policy-wise, he was a pro-choice candidate who was 22 points up among evangelicals because they saw him as such a, a strong and courageous leader and America's mayor. I think that there is room for that. I think those two candidates that you mentioned, it wasn't so much their position on abortion or being pro-life per se. It was one had a much more extreme position and the other one was just sort of medieval. I mean, he had this really bizarre idea about <laughs> women and, and mm -hmm. it was, I don't and even want to get right, into it. Right. Yeah, it, it was just, it was ridiculous. And in fact, as you saw, the GOP absolutely denounced his views on that matter. Let me very quickly let uh, Maria yeah. weigh in here and give you the final word. Well, so I agree with Amy that the GOP should get credit for the diversity that they have in governorships, but it's not enough because leadership positions do actually happen to be very important in Congress where you actually pass bills that are going to affect what the, change, the, the changing demographics of America. So until the GOP understands that and until they deal with the agenda as well, not just on immigration but on women's issues and, and economic issues as well, they're going to have to change their symbol from the elephant to the woolly mammoth because they're going to go extinct if they don't make the change that they know they need to make. <laughs> oh, what a great note. I like that, that line. That was the good. Woolly mammoth. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You have been working on that one. All right, Maria Cardona, Amy Holmes, nice to see you both. Thank you. Thanks Thank so much, you. Randy. A best friend even more loyal than you could ever hope. We'll tell you how this family dog helped save a lost little boy. When a major hospital wanted to provide better employee benefits while balancing the company's bottom line, their very first word was... Apple.